Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to set a Linux development environment on Windows using WSL and Docker. WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, is a Windows feature that tries to integrate Linux into the Windows ecosystem. With WSL on Windows 11, I believe they have successfully covered most of the Linux use case, and it's time to say goodbye to VirtualBox and Dual Boot. To begin using WSL, you have to meet certain requirements. So the basic requirement is to have Windows 10 with version 2004 or higher. So first, go to setting, and then head to about. Here you will see your version number. This is only the basic requirement, but some of the major functions have their own requirement. So for example, let's say using GPU on the WSL. So this feature requires Windows 10 with versions 21x2 or higher. Then another major function using graphical interface on the WSL. This feature requires Windows 11. So to have the most complete experience of WSL, I, be, I suggest you to upgrade to Windows 11 if possible. Okay, so let's get started. The whole install process is very easy. Open the PowerShell with admin privilege. And then run the following command. WSL install. That's it. The whole process is very automated. So it will install um, all the components and enable related Windows feature. After the installation process is complete, you put your machine to activate the Windows feature. During the install process, it will install Ubuntu as the default distro. Therefore, you will see a terminal after you reboot. So here they're asking you to create a Linux user. But I prefer closing this terminal and reopen the new one. Because I don't think a separate user is necessary for a development environment. Okay, so first, let's do um apt-get update. And a app get upgrade to upgrade the package. Okay. So if you don't want to use Ubuntu and want to use other Linux distro, they provide a very convenient way to set up a new distro. So first open Microsoft Store and search for the desired distro. For example, um, I will use Debian. Okay, so click on get. The whole experience is very similar to downloading an app on your phone. Very intuitive and easy. So of course, um, your desired distro may not be available and there is other ways to install a distro and I will include that in my other video. Okay, let's try to open it. Yeah, and that's it. You have a Debian setup ready to be used. So now the whole WSL setup is complete. Let's take a look at the top three features of WSL. So first is how Microsoft has integrated Linux into the Windows file system. So let's open the file explorer. Scroll to the end and you will see a Linux tab. So here we show all the Linux that show you have installed on your machine. So let's open Ubuntu. So here you will see the whole Linux file system. And the whole experience is the same as what you get with Windows File System. So for example, 
the left click um context menu is the same you can open with notepad unzip it everything and then you can just drag and drop so the same thing works for linux so for example if i want to access my windows drive on the on linux so let's go to my and you will see the c drive and d drive so of course there is a performance penalty when you assess a linux file system on windows or vice versa but the most impressive thing is how microsoft has provided a seamless experience in assessing a file system from a whole different operating system the second function is using linux graphical interface on windows for demonstration i will be using gedit so gedit is a graphical editor on linux okay so now let's open gedit so here we can see a very Linux style editor on Windows, which is really amazing. Okay, so the whole experience is very smooth. In my opinion, it's very similar to native already. So one thing to mention is with a proper um, GPU driver setup on Windows, the best out will automatically config the um, hardware acceleration. So that's the reason why it can achieve a very close to native experience with the graphical interface. The final feature to talk about is GPU acceleration on WSL. So currently it only works with NVIDIA GPU. And this feature is obviously aiming at users that use machine learning. So the setup is very simple. All you need to do is make sure you have the latest NVIDIA driver installed on the Windows. And after you have installed the driver, you can go to the Linux instance and use NVIDIA SMI to confirm the setup is complete. So by default, um, NVIDIA SMI is not in the path. So you have to type in the whole path. So here you can see, no, without any setup, I can already use my GPU in inside of the WSL instance. How can we not have Docker on a modern development environment? Let's go to the Docker homepage and download a Docker desktop. So here, select Windows. Okay, let's click on the installer. Okay, so here I will skip the tutorial. First, let's take a look at the setting. So the first setting is start Docker desktop when you log in. So enable this if you want Docker to start when you boot up your machine. The so next setting to take care of is WSL integration. So to understand what this setting means, we have to first take a look at the architecture of Docker desktop. So let's open a PowerShell. So here we can see all the installed WSL instance. So there exists an instance called Docker Desktop and Docker Desktop Data. So this, so here we can, Docker Desktop is actually using a client server architect. And this is the Docker server. 
and let's go to Ubuntu and use Docker version. So here we can see Ubuntu is actually acting as a client and accessing the Docker desktop on a separate WSL instance. And here we can see um, the integration is enabled on the default distro, which is Ubuntu. So if we try to access Docker on Debian this moment, it will fail with the error that Docker does not exist. And let's try to enable it here. Okay, so now it should be activated. Okay, yes. We have Docker. So we have to go to boot. So now we, we can use Docker on Debian. So, yeah, activate this as you need. One thing that I really like about Docker Desktop with WSL is how simple the setup process is. So to use GPU inside a Docker container, you will normally need to install NVIDIA Docker and do some setting. But with this setup, you will not need to do any setting and NVIDIA Docker is already configured. So to test this, let's run a cooler container. Let's use Navita SMI to verify the setup. So yes, very simple. No setup and you can already use GPU inside container. To have a complete development environment, you need an editor. My recommendation is Visual Studio Code because it's very lightweight and there's a lot of plugin. Let's take a look at it. To make the most out of this WSL with Docker setup, there's one plugin that I really recommend, and it's called Remote Development. It's an official plugin for Microsoft. By installing this, it will install three plugins: Remote SSH, Remote WSL, and Remote Container. The name of it is very explanatory already. Um, the core concept of this setup plugin is to provide a similar experience when developing inside a remote con environment as you get as developing inside a local environment. So the overall experience of this three plugin is very similar. So I will focus on remote container. So let's say if you're developing a web application using Python, and you have a container that have all the dependency installed, and every time you start developing, you will start the same container, right? So here, you can connect to it using Remote Explorer and attach to it. And there's a few functions that I really want to talk about. So first is the plugin system. So here you will see all the plugin installed in your local environment, which is the Windows side, and the plugin installed inside the container. As you can see, this is a fresh container. But Visual Studio Code will install all the plugins you have previously installed inside container that is start with the same image, which is very convenient as the nature of Docker is disposable and non-permanent storage. And the next function is the debugging function. Because we're developing a web application, we need to expose a port and access the website format. So let's say here I have the jungle application and let's start debugging it. So shows the jungle. One very cool function is that it will do a port forwarding by itself, not through Docker, but through the Visual Studio Code system. So here it will show open in browser. And here you go. You can access your web application from here and start debugging. And the whole setup is very simple and very convenient. And here's the end 
of my video if you like it please help to like and subscribe and see you in the next video